Hello everyone, this is a joint broadcast by GoTurkey and Tau Passport. Today we are at Milas Bodrum Airport, General Aviation Terminal, where they welcome worldwide celebrities and businessmen arriving with their private jets to Bodrum. And today I'm going to welcome two guests, actually two expats living in Turkey. I will treat them some Turkish coffee, maybe some Turkish dessert, so that we can talk about their wonderful Turkey memories. Buckle up, it's coming up now. Here we are at Tau Prime Class Lounge at Minas Bodrum Airport. Today I have two precious guests. One of them is a British Jamaican beauty, international sport anchor, dear Samantha Jensen. And my other guest is, is a young gentleman from Lebanon, dear Rashad Gandur. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you, you for this. both look beautiful, very energetic. We feel Great beautiful. Great pleasure, thank you so much. <laughs> I think being in Bodrum by itself, giving a huge energy to all of us. Definitely, definitely. It's a, a very unique, beautiful soul that is Bodrum. I like it here, I love it here. So you came with a private chat. How was the experience using the airport in both sides? To be honest, uh, the experience is very, very nice. Why? Because, you know, like when you have a busy life, the airport is very important. You need the airport to be as quick as possible, the service, and you need it to be as luxurious as possible. So having experienced almost around 90 airports around the world, I can say that Istanbul Airport and Bodrum Airport stand out as one of a kind. As you can see, we landed, the service was ready, the cars were ready, the welcome was very nice and warming, and they make you directly feel as if you have arrived home. We're gonna go into the details of the airport and the lunch and everything, but before I wanna hear your stories in Turkey, because you've been living in Turkey for a long time. So, Samantha, let's start with you. How oh, long wow. have you been living here? What's your story? Oh my gosh, my story. Well, I've been living in Turkey for six years now, more than six years. And I came for the opportunity for a challenge. Um, I'm an international sports anchor working for TRT World and there was a point in my life where I just wanted something more and I didn't know a lot about Turkey. I knew about the, the footballing culture. I knew about you know, the, the big rivalry between Galatasaray, Fenerbahce and I knew that Liverpool won the Champions League in Istanbul but that's all I knew. So that's how it all started, like having the opportunity to work and live in Istanbul and since then I've just had an amazing career because this country has given me so much as a woman, as a black woman as well. Everybody's just really opened their arms to me and it's, it's been probably one of the best experiences of my life and I don't regret moving here whatsoever. It's been a, a roller coaster of emotions <laughs> and you know it also helps that you have some of the best coasts <laughs> in the world on your doorstep as well. Um, so yeah, that's my story. I've just had the best time bringing new, unique stories to the world. Unique Turkish footballing sports stories as well, because there's a bit of mystique around this country as well. So I've been happy to be a part of that, and it's just been amazing. I've been, and like, and been we very are blessed. so happy to hear <laughs> all about these, you know, beautiful experiences. Thank you. So. I'm going to ask you the same question to Reshat. You've been living in Turkey for a long time as well. So what is your story? The story is very funny, actually. Uh, you know, Lebanon was part of the Ottoman Empire. So when you go to school, you learn in the books about the Ottoman Empire, about Turkey, and you hear a lot. And uh, my grandfather used to live here. He lived in Turkey for, for, in Turkey for around 30 years. Wow, it's a long time. Very long time. So I always had this 
reminiscence about Turkey, yeah? and I wanted to find out. 2009, we were invited for the opening of one of the brands that were doing an event in Turkey. Usually they do it every year in a city, and we were invited. And 2009 was the first time I came to Turkey, yeah? and I was just shocked. I was shocked by the beauty of the city, by the culture, by the people. And you feel as if it's a clash between Europe and Asia. It's a mix. But uh, the most thing that struck my mind is that when you arrived, we went to one of the hotels that is on the Bosphorus. So, Reshad, I really wonder what was the most surprising thing among all the other memories. Actually, the most surprising thing was the hotels that are on the Bosphorus. And when you sit on the Bosphorus and you see the ship cruising left and right. And the second most important thing is that we as businessmen, as a busy person, we love a dynamic city. And Istanbul is, or Turkey is a very, very dynamic country. It's 24 hours, nonstop. And this is what we like. I can compare it very much to New York in terms of traffic, of movement, of melting pot, because there isn't just Turkish people living in this country. It attracts all sorts of nationalities, especially neighboring countries or Caucasian countries, Mediterranean countries. So this gives it its extra edge. If you look at all the neighboring countries that Turkey has, none of them has this melting pot that this country has. So how about you, Samantha? What was the most surprising thing that you experienced when you arrived first? Well, I have a very, <laughs> quite an opposite story to you. When I first landed, again, I, the only picture I knew of Turkey was that it was sunny, like always sunny, because I know a lot of people would come to the country for their holidays. So I thought, oh, it's going to be sunny all the time. Great, I'm going to like love this weather. But when I landed, it was great, and I just thought, Am I back in the UK? Like, what's, <laughs> going, what's going on? But I arrived in uh, November 2015, so obviously that was the winter period. But what, I, what struck me was that you have a beautiful winter. So when I moved into my apartment and I actually could see Galata Tower from my, from my living room, one day it snowed and I, <laughs> everything was just covered in snow, the mosques, the, the domes, and I just thought, it's like a winter wonderland. It's absolutely beautiful. So that struck me at the beginning. Turkey really does go through the seasons. It's not just one, it's not just um, a linear place. You, you have so many colors, moods, sounds, sights, everything. You're right, it is a melting pot of people and nationalities. And when I first arrived, we had everyone joining TRT from different nationalities, from Australia, from you know, the continent of Africa, from the States, from the UK. It is a huge melting pot. So Samantha, you made such a good point because everybody thinks Turkey is only a summer destination, but on the contrary, we have many different ski resorts and all over the country. So I enjoy it. I visit every year, you know, every winter. So you made a very important point actually. And people can really come and enjoy the way winter time in those high quality, high standards five-star ski resorts in and Turkey. It's stunning. It's just the views are just breathtaking and just being amongst nature, it's it's very unique, very beautiful. Very lucky to live here, actually. Very lucky. Since we are on summer still, <laughs> yes. let's talk about Bodrum. So I don't know if this was your first time in Bodrum or not, Reshat. Actually not. Uh, I've been many times to Bodrum. It's becoming a summer spot. Usually we used to go to summer in European cities for three months. But now it's shifting. We do two months in Bodrum and the rest in Europe. So the bigger piece of the cake goes to Bodrum. <laughs> <laughs> and we enjoy it so much that this year we decided to bring our yacht to Bodrum. And uh, in the summer it will be in Bodrum and in the winter it will be in Istanbul. So we have decided to let's say, ditch European cities and enjoy and explore the gems of Turkey. 
So speaking of yacht, you're a yacht owner. So how do you see the marinas and all the services in Bodrum? Actually, the services are, the services are uh, quite uh, astonishing. Let's put it this way. In terms of several reasons. So I can state some of them. First of all, uh, the infrastructure is very well done. The access, the exit of the marina is very good. The maneuvering of the yachts is pretty amazing. And everything is on or next to the marinas. So if you take several marinas in Bodrum, you enter with the yacht and you have all of the high-end restaurants in the marina. So it just takes you from the yacht to the restaurant two, three minutes. That's it, walking distance. Whereas if you compare it to Europe and European cities, most probably the yachts are a bit further away from the main city center and which causes a very big problem because then you will need to go from the yacht to the car and to your destination. So in Bodrum is very centrally localized, so easy access even in the middle of a, everything. Even though it's a large city, Bodrum is a very large city, but it, the, the marinas, you have several marinas and it depends where you want to go. You just park the yacht and you are in front of your favorite restaurant, favorite bar, favorite uh, where you want to walk, spend some time with the family. So everything is interconnected. And this gives a lot, a lot of rest and uh, happiness to the yacht owners. And this is one of the main reasons our yacht is coming to Turkey. Excellent. So, how about you, Samantha? Oh, how my yacht? My yacht? <laughs> yes, I, I'm bringing my yacht to Turkey yeah, as well, to Bodrum, yes. <laughs> After you talk about your yacht, I will be talking about my yacht. Okay, we all have yachts, it's fine. It's <laughs> but we are already invited by Rashad mm. to his yacht, so... No, yes, never I know, will. can't wait, love <laughs> you. Know we say the best yacht is your mm. friend's yacht. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you feel about Bodrum, Samantha? Oh I really my wonder. gosh. Um, I don't know, it just makes me feel so blessed. I, I've been to Bodrum so many times. Like I said before, I do feel very privileged to be able to travel around the country. So I've had great experiences, not just in Bodrum, but on the Black Sea region as well. Thankfully, my job and my opportunities with my job tra makes me travel around the country. But when it comes to Bodrum, it's just, I can just let go. I can let go, I can just feel at peace, you have the views, the water, the the service. It's this is on my doorstep. You know, this is you know, after a long week at work in the studio and it's like, you know what, what do I want to do this weekend? You know what? I'm gonna go to Bodrum for two nights, for three nights. I have that option. And I know a lot of my friends in the UK, they might feel a little bit jealous. I don't really care. But um it's that it's that I get a lot of freedom when I come to Bodrum. I can just switch off and I'm at peace because I'm around nature. So I was actually here a few weeks ago for a retreat and I did yoga, I was working out, I, I ate healthily as well. That's another really good thing about the coast as well. It's the, the food, the fresh food, the diet. It's just, it just does wonders for your soul. That's how it makes me feel. Anyway. There are lots of detox centers in Bodrum exactly, as well. Exactly, yeah. Right? So I'm going to have a good summer. You know, detox, retox, detox, retox. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> so since you are in the entertainment world, and as you know, Bodrum is such a big destination for the celebrities and also sport people as well, right? I'm sure you hear a lot from your friends too. Yeah, I mean, look, the thing about being on the coast in general is that you have a lot of footballers or let's just say sports clubs in general and not just Turkish clubs, we're talking about international teams. They come to the coast to play golf, to, you know, to um, get fit. They want warm weather training. So they all come to Turkey because it's the highest standard. And it's just, a, it's a great, it's a great place to be. Like you can just really enjoy yourself and just relax. I think that's the, the biggest thing. Come here. You're relaxed, everything's done for you. You don't have to worry about a thing. So yeah, you do find a lot of sports clubs, sports people coming to the coast in general. So how do you feel as a woman traveling by yourself all around Turkey? Oh, wow. Um, I feel very comfortable, but I know I'm very privileged. So I, you know, who I work for what my job entails. I'm lucky that wherever I go in the country, I'm welcomed with open arms. The fact that I am a black woman as well, and some people may not have met a black woman before, it's like, 
I've never felt uncomfortable. It's more of a case of, wow, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I'm from, you know, I'm English. And they're like, yeah, you're not really English. Where, where, where are you really from? So that's when I say, you know, my heritage is Jamaican. So it's, it's more of a case of, I, again, I just feel super comfortable wherever I travel because there's a sense of wonder. So I'm, I'm more intrigued about their culture. They're intrigued about mine as well. So yeah, I've always felt comfortable, but I do say that it's because I'm from a privileged position of who I work for and what I do. So, yeah. Here's our Turkish coffee in traditional oh, Turkish yeah. coffee cups. Thank you. Çok teşekkürler. Thank you. Thank you. With some Turkish delight on the side. <laughs> I've Thank always you. loved the, the cups. It's just the, uh, Look at the, the decor. It's very nice. This Beautiful. Is the traditional way. Mm. Exactly. And, and the you got patterns you are very Ottoman style. Yes. And if you pay attention on the patterns of the coffee cups, you will see traditional patterns of Ottoman Empire. This is what is so special about Turkey. The government, the Ministry of Tourism and Culture is doing a great effort to keep connected to its culture, to its Asian history. Because as they say, if you don't know your history, you can never predict the future. And this is something that Turkey is doing amazingly. It's still connected with its Ottoman. It is proud of its history which is very important. A country that is proud of its history is very, very important in order to look ahead. So if you build on your past, you will have a very strong foundation. But if you forget your past and try to demolish it, this is where the problem is. So Rashad, as an investor, because you've been keep doing huge investments in Turkey, how do you see the tourism investment potential of Bodrum and in general, all country? First of all, we have to say that Turkey as a country is very lucky to have their president and their government. Because any investor, and I'm a foreigner, but any investor coming to the country, first thing you look at is security. And this is what Turkey has. This is number one. Number two, it's a melting pot as mentioned. And number three, most important, it's attracting millions of tourists. If you look at Bodrum, Bodrum is attracting extremely rare and important brands, where in some cities in Europe, they are unavailable, but they are deciding to come to Bodrum. And this is thanks to what? Thanks to the airports that are being built, thanks to the facilities that are being built, infrastructure, and most importantly, security. If you, if you look at the history of Turkey these days, there are two things that are e extremely going higher and higher, which are export, the numbers are increasing every quarter, and tourism. Even during the COVID period, the government and the president of Turkey made sure that everyone will be safe and took all the necessary precautions so that tourists can come and the local people and the people living in the country, residents, can still enjoy. Unlike other countries where tourists and non-residents or non-local were treated in a very unequal manner and this is a very very big advantage for this country so actually we can say the same thing for the measurements against the COVID as well so minister of tourism and culture they did an incredible job and start issuing safe tourism certificate for the hotels for the restaurants for the many other places who are already in the industry including the airport so speaking of being very conscious on COVID and all the other things for the tourism, I think Minister of Tourism and Culture did a great job as well. This is number one, and I may add on it that they made sure that the hotel abided by the rules. You know, you can just put the rule out there and no one abides by it. But they made sure everyone was abiding with it. Why? Because they had a higher image for the country. It's not just like 100,000, 200,000 tourists coming. They wanted the bigger picture, which is millions of tourists. And this is what they got at the end of the day, which is a great success. So all these tourists are not just coming to enjoy our beautiful coastline, also to enjoy our incredible cuisine. So since we're having our Turkish coffee, I would like to remind you that in the north of Bodrum, there's a lovely small town called Milas, which is also famous for its Turkish cuisine and local olive oil. So 
Do you guys enjoy Turkish cuisine? I really want to hear your experiences about it. I think I've enjoyed it a bit too much. So when I first started, obviously, I was like, for the record, Gözleme is my favorite like dish. It's just my my comfort food. If I want to feel like kind of just at home, comfy, then that's my go-to. I went to Kayseri one year and I covered the, I think it was the World Snowboarding Championships. And I think it's the place of Manta. Am I correct in saying exactly, it is? Yeah. And I've never tried so many different variants of Manta. I thought there was just one type. But it was, it, that was a very great experience for me, like going to different parts of Turkey and like when I went to Trabzon and I covered a story with Trabzon Spore and I had different pides and it was just brilliant. I just thought, okay, I don't care if I'm going to put on a little bit of weight because you know what, I'll just go back into the gym, it's fine. But you have to try the culture. You have to try the food. If you want to understand a country, you try the food. You try the food and you understand the sport culture as well. But no, I've... Turkish food for me is very much a comfort factor. It makes me feel at home. Other than Caribbean food, that's my go-to. Turkish food is my, is my thing as well. Do you cook, Samantha? <laughs> Um, I do. I'm just very lazy. Um, I think if you're just cooking for yourself, it can get a bit, you know, a bit boring. But I, yeah, I can dabble in the kitchen a little bit. So, since you don't like to cook a lot at home, then maybe street food might be an option, right? We street have food, yeah. simit, we have cockroach, oh, as gosh, we mentioned. Yes, simit. I do love simit, especially in the mornings. Oh my gosh! So when I like get into uh, TRT. I do like a coffee, I'll have a, an Americano, and I'll have a simit. It's just, it gets me going. I love it. Yeah, there are lots but it has of... to be with cheese as well. It has to be done the right way. Toasted, melted cheese, I'm happy. Can't was it kashala, simit, like, that's it, I love it. That's my, my comfort food. Yeah, yeah, Turkish cheddar is a high quality. We have very good cheddar in Turkey, so it goes so very well. Very good dairy products yeah. in general. It's very good meat, very good dairy. The bread, oh my God. The bread. This is why I go to the gym so much. <laughs> this is why I work out so much because I like to enjoy my food. I don't want to feel guilty about a thing. So yeah, thank you, Turkey, for <laughs> for all the uh, the weight that I may have put on. But no, I I don't regret a thing. It's beautiful. I love the I love the food here. So how about you, Rashad? <laughs> you know, there's a saying by Napoleon: If the world is one country, Istanbul would be the capital. And, doğru, doğru. Uh, the, can't, the food in Turkey is very good for me as well because it reminds me of home. It's almost very similar to Lebanese food, Arabic food. It's very similar. And we eat in the same way. So we have kokoreç, but in a different name. We have the bigger kokoreç under another name. So we have all everything and I eat everything. And uh, most importantly is that when you eat, it is a joy. For me, food is like a joy. Why? Because after having a hectic day at the office, I don't like just to grab something and go. No, I love to sit and eat and have my lunch or dinner. It's very important. So food is very important for me as well. And uh, to be honest, I almost enjoy everything. Okay, Reshad, so what's your favorite food from Turkish cuisine? To be cuisine? honest, it's the kebabs. <laughs> you can't go out of the kebabs. That's true, yeah. Once you start with the kebab, you can't stop. And, and there oh, are many, there are many. I like many, the... many, many. And this is the most beautiful thing about going back to Bodrum or Istanbul or any other city, is that even though these cities are specialized in certain types of food, you can find all the other food that you require. So for example, Bodrum is very famous about manta, but you can have one of the best fish. You can have one of the best meat, kebab. Shrimp. Bodrum, which is part of Turkish Riviera, is not only famous for its olive oil, but is also one of the biggest seafood center of Turkey. So we have different type of seafood, different type of shellfish as well. Oh, so I'm sure you enjoy experiencing some of them. Mashallah. So Samantha, have you had a chance to oh, yeah. try some definitely. local seafood yes, here? Yes, definitely, definitely. And after this conversation, I definitely want to have some more of it as well. So yeah, I'm a big fan. <laughs> How about you, Rashad? Yes, actually, as you can see, it's just not, it's not just, just we like it or we love the seafood in uh, Turkey, eh? but uh, if you see all the international restaurants, mainly fish restaurants, let's say that are focused on sushi, since it's raw fish, the quality of the fish really needs to be good. 
and this is what amazes me, is that I know a lot of restaurant owners who owns this type of restaurant, and they always say that the quality that they get, they are not getting it anywhere in the world. Because, again, the government is making sure that the fish is grown in an organic and healthy manner, unlike other places where they just they use like other places where the seas are not clean enough or that these fish are grown artificially and then the end result is not always the same. So that's why we are also biggest exporter of seafood in the region as well. Because the quality, as mentioned, and the packaging and the companies that export the seafood are benefiting a lot from what the government is offering them. And I'm sure you are well aware that uh, Turkey is becoming in the top 10 largest uh, producers of aqua farms. So they don't just have aqua farms, they produce aqua farms, which is uh, organic fish that live in. So uh, I think they are on the right path. And I think, I hope the quality stays as it is, because it's one of the best. After all this conversation, maybe we should go to a nice seafood restaurant all together in Bodrum. I'm hungry now. <laughs> We're <to> great. Hungry. <laughs> so my next question is about airports. We are at one of the best and most popular airports of Turkey, which is Milas Bodrum Airport, operated by Tav Airports. So what does airport mean to you in your life? What does airport mean to me? I think after such a difficult couple of years with the pandemic, airport means freedom for me because I have the freedom to travel, to see my friends, to see my family, to experience new cultures, new experiences. And obviously I travel a lot for work as well, so there's a freedom of, you know, just going to different places and doing different stories. I'm so glad I've got that back actually after such a difficult, difficult period. But I can't imagine an airport not being a part of my life. It's very much a big part of my, my being. I've always imagined myself being a worldwide woman an international woman. And there's something about being in an airport where you don't know who you're going to meet. You, you could just, I don't know, just, just out of, I call it kismet, but you could just sit next to someone that you don't even know, you've never even met, and have the best conversation with someone and connect with them. And that happened recently as well. So kismet, freedom, that's what airport means to me. So it might be very surprising, right? Yeah. It's very glamorous as well, I love it, I love it. I like to make sure that I have a nice outfit as well whenever I turn up and yeah, you never know who you're gonna meet. So how about you, Reshat? You've been keep traveling with your private jet all around the world, but also in Turkey in different cities. So what does airport mean to you? Traveling 500, 600 hours per year, it's a lot of miles. And an airport is very important. I look forward to the airport because when you arrive to the airport, when you're about to board the plane, you know your phone is going to be switched off. You're going to switch off from the whole world for a couple of hours. And then when you land, it's mayhem again. So arriving to the airport, it is very important. The welcoming, the warm feeling. And this is what I felt every time I land in Bodrum Airport. You feel the welcoming, which is very important. Because when you are coming, you are tired, you want to leave the jet, you want to go to your car. If you have not a good experience, it stays in your mind. And then maybe this city gets a bad energy due to the airport. Whereas the airport is, let's say, the first step into the city. So either you get a positive response or a negative response. This is my opinion. And uh, I want to say thank God every time I've landed in Milas, it's even, in Bodrum Milas, it's been even better and better due to the service, due to the welcome, due to the food. And uh, as you know, the jet is catered by the airport. So whenever we are going or coming, it's the food. So basically, uh, the food was really, really good every time. And whatever we decided to eat on the plane, it was always being prepared by the airport. So. Uh, I would like to say, first of all, congratulations on the renovation. And it's a very large step, actually. And it's very nice, very welcoming. I love the colors. So, and uh, what I like the most about airports is when there is light. 
So when there is light coming in, it gives you happiness and positivity. There are so many airports in the world where it's completely dark and so many airports in the world where the light comes in. And this is one of the few airports where you can keep track of time. So if you look at the sky, you will see it's dark, light, and you can understand what's happening around you. In my opinion, the airport is like a circus with the duty free, with the people running left and right. And it's a joy. It's a joy to travel actually. But this airport makes it really easy. And it's a great decision to have such an airport because it's such an important city where tourism is extremely high. So how about Tav Prime Class Lunch? Did you like it? It was really good. Arriving from the plane, the car was ready. The hostess were very welcoming. As mentioned earlier, the airport is the face of the city. And the lounge, the colors of the lounge looks really bright and gives you a lot of energy, positive energy. And human beings, you are very simple. If you look at small things, small nice welcome, a smile, it gives you a lot of positivity, a lot of energy, even to continue your day. So first of all, thank you for TAV for making our days even better whenever we come to the lounges or whenever we travel from one of the airports. And the most important thing is the luxury. So for us traveling on private jets, whether you are driving private jet or normal jet, you want the service from A to Z to be as easiest as possible. Let's not forget, we are human beings and we are traveling. So traveling makes a person tired. So it is the airport and the people who work in the airport to have us to do their, to, their job, to do our life even easier. And every time I land in this airport, I feel even it's better a notch higher. So I don't know till when they can reach. I think they are reaching the top, but let's see. Excellent. So how about you, Samantha? Well, it's kind of hard to follow up that perfect answer, but I will agree with everything that you said, apart from the whole, you know, private jet thing. I mean, I'm on my way to earning my own uh, private jet. I'll get there. I'll, I'll catch you up. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, look, the, the whole positivity of the, the lounge, the the service, the bar, the people, the, I, 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 I pay attention to detail. And you know, when it comes to these chairs, the quality of it, I, it's very homey, it's very cozy. So I love lounges for the fact that it just makes life that bit easier. You know, the quality of service just makes things effortless. And that's what I love about it. So now I'm very, I feel very blessed right now to experience something like this, you know? So again, thank you to yourself and to Tav as well for this amazing experience. I'm really, yeah, Thank really you blessed. to thank you. you. Thank you for hosting us and thank Out. you for Tav. So since you like it very much, I would like to give you a little gift. More? You're giving us more things? Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> more gifts. More gifts? I love of this. Of course. <laughs> so here's my gift. Tao Passport membership card. Thank you. To check you live. You can use this card and take all the privileges over 19 different countries, oh, thank you. 400 different lunches all around the world. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We this really makes appreciate life it. a little bit easier. Yeah. yeah. You can use all the lunches, fast tracks, VIP transportation, and many other different advantages. We appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. So, dear Samantha, dear Rashad, thank you very much for being my guest at Tav Prime Class Lunch at Milas Bodrum Airport. I really enjoy every single moment of our conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much for hosting us. It was a great pleasure having this small discussion, and I'm sure we will have more and more experience to remember in Bodrum Milas Airport. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> Place to create memories. <laughs> exactly. Mashallah. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. So that's all for the week. We will meet again with new guests at Tau Prime Class Lunch at Mila Sport Room Airport. Please follow us on GoTurkiye and Tau Passport social media accounts. And don't forget to watch the other episodes of Love of Turkey. See you soon.